Hi kids, I'll be doing a reading in a few minutes, but before we begin, there are a few words which might be new to you that I would like for you and your classmates and your teacher to discuss before the reading. The first one is Kabul. The second one is Afghanistan. The third word is Farsi. That's F-A-R-S-I. The fourth one is Chadur. C-H-A-D-O-R. The fifth word is a refugee camp. Intense. The sixth word, actually letters, an abbreviation is W-F-P. And the final one is UNHCR. All right, I'll see you in a few minutes. Hi kids, my name is Valerie. I run an online bookstore called To Summer Books here in Winnipeg. I sell books by authors from Africa, Asia, and uh, the Middle East, and I also sell books by Indigenous authors. I am here today to read for you. Um, this is one of my favorite books currently in the bookstore, and I hope you'll enjoy it. It's called The Library Bus, and it was written by, Ra by Baram Rahman. All right. <clears throat> All right, so I'm just gonna start by reading this little introduction. And it says, it is still dark in Kabul, Afghanistan, when the library bus rumbles out of the city. There are no bus seats. Instead, there are chairs and tables and bookshelves and shelves of books, and there are no passengers. Instead, there is Pari, who is nervously starting her first day as mama's library helper. Paris stands tall to hand out notebooks and pencils at the villages and the refugee camp, but she feels intimidated. The girls they visit are learning to write English for mama. Paris can't even read or write in Farsi yet, but next year she will go to school and learn all there is to know. And that is a wonderful thing. Not long ago, mama tells her girls were not allowed to read at all. All right, so we'll start the story. So this is the first page. Arrange the books, clean up, be nice to the other girls. Parry repeats under her breath. You'll be great, Mama says, giving Parry a hug. Today is Parry's first day as Mama's library helper. But this is no ordinary library. This one is on wheels. And it's the only library bus in all of Kabul. Instead of seats, it has so many books that Pari can barely count them all. So that's the bus. That's Mama. And that's Pari. And so they're driving to take books to girls. The streets are still dark when Pari and Mama leave home. Their first stop is a small village tucked in a valley between two grey mountains. A fiery sun rises over the passing fields. A group of girls stand under a giant oak tree, waiting patiently. One little girl waves her chador. Over here, she shouts. So this is the oak tree, the giant oak tree. There are the girls waiting for the bus. And that's the girl who's wearing her chador. And there's one girl on top of the tree. They're all waiting for the bus to stop. <clears throat> Pari opens the back door and everyone climbs inside. The girls return the books they borrowed last week and search through the shelves for new books to read. Salam, my girls. Let's make a circle now, Mama says calmly. Everyone 
pays attention, we are going to practice some English. First, they sing the alphabet song, then they count from one to 10. Okay, so this is the bus. Pari opens the door and all the girls rush in. And then over here we have Mama, she's helping them learn how to read. And these are all the girls sitting in a circle. When the lesson ends, a girl in a yellow dress skips over to Pari. Are you new here? She asks. What's your name? Do you live here on the bus? Can you print A, B, C? I can print the letters all the way to Z. She talks very fast. I can print them too, Pari says quickly. But Pari can't even read or write in Farsi yet. <clears throat> Mama starts the bus. Bulb, vroom, and they are off to a refugee camp beyond the mountains. The old city spreads out in front of them like the colorful embroidered scarves in the Grand Bazaar. Tiny houses, dusty roads, one hill after another, and then a ring of ragged mountains. Pari fidgets with her zipper. When did you learn ACD, Mama? She asks. Oh, you mean ABC? That's the English alphabet. Just like Aleph, Be, T in Farsi. Mama takes a deep breath. Grandpa taught me a long time ago when I was a young girl. Sorry, when I was young, girls were not allowed to go to school to learn to read or write. I had to hide in the basement to study. Perry wonders if mama ever was ever afraid in grandma's, grandpa's basement. It always looks dark down there. And here's a picture of Perry and her mom, Perry and mama. And then here's grandpa and mama when mama was a little girl. Harry, when you go to school next year, I want you to study hard. Never stop learning. Then you will be free. Tell me now, she adds with a wink. How does learning make you feel? Free, Harry screams, raising her arms in the air. It is midday when they arrive at the camp. Paris sees rows and rows of tents. There's dust everywhere and the kids have patches on their coats. Okay, so I'll show you this one. So here's a bus and Pari and Mama and the bus comes to a stop. This is the camp and these are tents. So many people were living in tents in refugee camps. Um, and it says UNHCR. And these are the little girls who are waiting for the library to arrive. <clears throat> Mama announces, those who need notebooks and pencils go to Pari, and those exchanging books come to me. Pari is surrounded by a crowd of girls asking for school supplies. I need a new pencil, a curly haired girl shouts. Another girl squeezes her way to the front of the line. Give me a notebook, she says, jumping up and down with excitement. Soon everyone is ready for a lesson. A, B, C, D. Repeat after me. One more time. Mama makes it sound like a beautiful song. A, B, C. Harry sings to herself very softly. So we have the girls and Mama and Harry all sitting trying to learn the alphabet. As, as, as they leave the camp, Perry reads the large letters written on the tents. W, F, P. And the next one is U, N, H, C, R. Good job, Perry, Mama cries. You got them right. Perry beams with pride. Back at home, Pari helps Mama make dinner, a bowl of hearty bean shoba with chunks of potato and carrot, 
at the table, she asks, next year, will you teach me to read? Mama says, you will go to a real school in the city. Why can't those girls go to a real school too? Harry asks, there are no schools for girls in the village or the camp. They only have the bus once a week, the library bus once a week, but I will help them the same way that your grandma, your grandpa helped me. At bedtime, Mama kisses Paris' forehead. You did well today. Paris smiles and gives Mama a snug hug. She thinks about the girls in the village and the girls in the camp. She thinks about the library bus, the new places they will go and the new girls they will meet tomorrow. And that is the end of our story.